I am here today with Cecilia Naker, a postdoc at University of California, San Francisco. Thank you, Cecilia, for spending time with us today to talk about your scientific career as well as the microbiome. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. We're going to dive right in. So how did you get into science and what what interested you in science? You know, I had kind of a winding path into science. I was not, you know, someone who knew from a very young age I wanted to do science. I um, was interested in a lot of things. I liked, I liked most of my classes at school. I was involved in sports and music and art. I liked learning new things. I liked problem solving. And um, in high school, junior year of high school, my biology class, we did some independent research projects. And that was kind of the first time that I realized that sort of the process of research was very exciting to me and sort of saw what that could be. And from there was interested in exploring more, particularly biology and learning about the natural world. In college, I studied biology and um, math and statistics and uh, kind of went on from there then to graduate school in my current position, so. Fantastic, and so uh, in graduate school, what did you uh, ultimately get your PhD in? Yeah, so my PhD uh, is in genome sciences from the University of Washington, which um, genome sciences is kind of a big bucket <laughs> term for uh, using basically tools of new technologies like DNA sequencing and mass spectrometry to study um, to study living things. And so my particular focus was using these tools to study communities of microorganisms and in particular the human microbiome. And that is why we brought you in today as a microbiome expert. So in, in just kind of simple terms, can you describe like what the microbiome is and what uh, it does for the body and what it does for health? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the human microbiome refers to sort of the ecosystem of uh, microscopic organisms that live in and on humans. And there are microbes sort of all over your body, um, on your skin and in your mouth. But in particular, most of them are... Um, live inside your gut where they perform a variety of functions that are really like crucial for our life and health. Um, so they help digest our food. They um, can synthesize vitamins. They sort of send signals to our immune system to uh, help communicate like what a good microbe versus a bad microbe looks like to the immune system and they can help regulate our metabolism. And um, we're still sort of learning new ways that um, sort of signals sent by these microbes inside of us interact with our own host, um, host cell functioning. I'm curious, was there anything in particular about the microbiome that jumped out at you as being an interesting uh, thing to be studying? Or how did you come across like deciding you wanted to study the microbiome? I got interested in the microbiome. Um, well, I was interested in um, ecology and sort of understanding how different organisms interact with each other, but I was also interested in um, human health and how we can use science to um, improve and promote human well being. And the thing about the microbiome is that it is this complex ecosystem that is totally sort of fundamental to what it means to be a healthy human being. Um, and we know that disruptions to our microbiome can have impacts in all these different diseases, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, um, response to infectious diseases, all of these things. Scientists until recently didn't really have a very clear understanding of what it means sort of for health itself to um, what sort of traits we need our microbiomes to have to be healthy. And I, I find that really interesting. And um, I like that it sort of uses the field of microbiome research, uses a lot of different tools and approaches. So I kind of get to use my brain in a lot of different ways um, and I'm always learning new things. So I like that as well. 
That's I. So my background is in neuroscience, and I still remember the first time I heard a story that the microbiome and the gut bacteria can actually affect brain health in certain ways. And I didn't believe it at first, but then I took a round of antibiotics and immediately, you know, I don't know if it was just because I was sick or not, but I remember getting um, kind of depressed for a little bit when somebody was like, hey, you should take a probiotic. You know, I kind of squinted my eyes and said, that's not possible. Can I comment on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Um, the whole brain, the ways our microbiome communicates with our brain is super interesting and super complicated and we're still figuring it out. But I mean, I think what really sort of shifted my perspective on the microbiome was to think about the fact that, you know, the microbes have been around for a lot longer than humans have and microbial diversity on the planet is so huge. And we really evolved in the presence of these microbes. So it really makes sense that our bodies would have these systems where we're responding to microbes because um, they've always, you know, been there as long as humans have. Some of the hardest things about studying the microbiome, or what are the biggest challenges to studying the microbiome? That's a good question. I think I think there are a lot of challenges, but one of them with the human microbiome specifically is that it's very hard to distinguish um, causes from effects or correlations. So we have done a lot of different studies, or this field of research has where we've shown that, okay, people who have depression have differences in their microbiome from people who don't have depression. People who have, you know, lung cancer have differences in their microbiome from people who don't have lung cancer. And so we've documented a lot of these things, but the hard part is to say, okay, what what does that mean? And to what extent do changes in the microbiome contribute to um, effects in some of these diseases and to what extent do sort of disruptions to our health also disrupt our microbiomes. Um, and this is also particularly hard because every person has a slightly different microbiome and it's sort of shaped by our life experiences, just like many other aspects of our health. Um, so I think the biggest challenge um, with studying the human microbiome is just trying to kind of deconvolve all of those factors and how they interact with each other. I, re I remember in graduate school, I went to a talk where somebody was doing research on mice on the microbiome, mm -hmm. and they were trying to very carefully select for certain bacteria that were in the gut of these mice. And I got really excited and I said, hey, I really want to do this research, like, would you recommend I do it? And they were like, yes, if you are super sterile and super like focused on not infect, you know, bringing your own microbiome into those mice. Um, and I myself was not up to the challenge, but I know that there's a lot of people out there that really like the idea of um, controlling the microbiome environment. Uh, have, have you made any changes to your own diet or uh, any changes to your own health uh, from what you've learned from the microbiome? You know, I think that's a hard question, but personally, I mostly have the view that this is a pretty new field of research. And if somebody is telling you something really specific, like this specific supplement is going to fix your microbiome, that is probably um, a scam. But the things that we do know about like how our diet shapes our microbiome is that um, eating lots of plant-based foods supports diversity in your microbiome. That's like very well shown. And that's something that I try to do for myself as well. Um, but sort of the, the specifics beyond that, I think we're still figuring out. Um, is there a difference in, in how much you cook the vegetables or cook your food? So if you're eating raw fruits and vegetables, will you have a very different response in your gut microbiome than if you're, you're cooking your food? That's a great question. And um, actually my current lab here at UC San Francisco had a research project starting to look into that a couple of years ago. 
Um, it was, I think, one of the first studies looking at that. And they found that some vegetables did seem to have um, differing effects on the microbiome if they were raw or cooked, but others did not. And um, this sort of makes sense if you think about that all of these vegetables have different chemical compositions and cooking them changes them in slightly different ways. But I believe they found that in particular, uh, sweet potatoes uh, have very different effects on the microbiome raw versus cooked. Um, and I mean, that's sort of consistent, you know, uh, a raw sweet potato is very different from a <laughs> sweet potato. <laughs> so, <laughs> makes I've, sense. I've undercooked some sweet potato fries and yeah, I can say that at least flavor wise. Yeah, I can imagine the bacteria are responding to it very differently as well. That's a fun fact. Thank you. Yeah. What kind of careers can uh, research into the microbiome lead to? Yeah, I think this is a great question because I think that many different careers in the near future will be thinking about the microbiome in, um, in what they do on a regular basis. So obviously scientists are studying the microbiome, but doctors, the microbiome is increasingly being integrated into the practice of medicine. So when you're prescribed antibiotics, hopefully the doctor will more frequently in the future suggest that you should consider a probiotic or consider ways to sort of restore your microbiome after taking that antibiotic. Um, but also things like nutritionists, thinking about how our food shapes our microbiome, um, pharmacists. So we know people with different microbiomes can metabolize drugs in different ways. So probably in the future, you might get sort of a microbiome test to determine what dose of a drug you should receive. And even things like um, engineering and design, we know that our microbiomes are shaped by the spaces we spend time in and the surfaces we encounter. So things like antimicrobial materials and clothing, I think um, in those careers, um, people will be thinking more about how that those things interact with our microbiomes as well. Well, I never would have thought clothing, but I guess it makes sense considering we have, our microbiome is also on our skin as well. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's awesome. obviously right. More relevant to the microbes on your skin, but um, uh, yeah, like they can talk to your immune system. So these things do end up kind of all connected. For kind of the last question, what is the scientific name of your favorite bacteria? Yes, I, so I am currently studying a gut bacteria called Agarthella lenta, uh, and it is fascinating. I am happy to talk more about it if you want me to. <laughs> oh, please do. What's so fascinating about um, uh, the the uh, anger fellow <laughs> anger fellow something anger fellow bacta? I think it called it. Ah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my favorite bacterium, Agarthella lenta, um, is a species of bacteria that lives in the human gut, and it seems to be pretty specific to the human gut. So we haven't really found it in like other primates or pigs or dogs or anything like that. And um, it can perform all sorts of weird chemical reactions that definitely human cells can't perform and many other gut microbes can't perform. So it can metabolize drugs, it can metabolize components of um, some plants that, um, uh, that can then uh, interact with our host cells. And um, it can interact with our immune system. And so it has sort of all these interesting traits that can affect our health, but we still don't know that much about sort of what nutrients this bacteria needs to grow and what bacteria it's competing and cooperating with in this larger gut ecosystem. So that's um, what I, what my research has been kind of focused on figuring out for the last year or two. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, thank you again for uh, coming and talking to our teachers. Uh, really appreciate learning about the microbiome. And um, yeah, thank you for all the work that you've done and how you've contributed to this uh, type 2 diabetes curriculum. Yeah, I'm so glad to have had the chance to talk to you.